Whilst Chris began compounding, polishing and waxing Ragdoll's hull, I undertook the joyful task of anti-fouling. The stuff I'm using, like we say, we've got the, the fine 700 finishing compound. We would have the 200, it's somewhere up there. We've got the, the polymer UV wax for machine application. I'm using the, the Farclaw wool bonnet and the, the fine mop for the wax. Yeah, I'm just going to crack on and I've got this section now lightly compounded. I'll maybe go as far as I can walk and then go back over it with the wax and we'll just try and progress through the hull pretty quick. Other thing I've got with me while I'm doing this is water because uh, a little spray of water here and there, you know, it, it, if there is a sticky bit, it helps to lube up the pad and keep things cool so that you don't work it and work it and work it with, uh, um, with the pad uh, to the stage that you burn the gel coat. On that, you just want to keep moving all the time, lightly, don't concentrate too much on any one area, um, working sort of shoulder width apart, okay? Okay, so I've worked through the first maybe 15 feet of the boat at shoulder width with the uh, stage two stuff. I've, I'm, like I say, stage two, because we did the, the course cut uh, last year and that was on the wool pad. And now after that, I've gone through with the, the machine UV wax on the, the soft pad. So we're just gonna reset to the next stage and go through it. Now the, way, the beauty of doing it this way is I don't have to then reset up the staging to go back and you know, I don't have to compound through the whole hull and then come back and reset and do a wax through the hull. I'm doing it compound and wax and in pitches of about 15 feet. Perfect. We're taking a short break and we've come over to Paul, who's out here to help him out with some... I think he wants us to push the propeller back in to get it into the oh that shot yeah we need to push this propeller in so paul's not here is he he's in the yard somewhere paul paul yeah polly 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 paul you go find him okay it's like that there they are. <laughs> Double trouble. Yep. So what was that? You're creaking me. Because he's old. He's 40. Never, You're 40 I'll, soon. Uh, yeah, but I'll never be as old as him. <laughs> so, it's fine. What is it? Like one month or something? Uh, when was your birthday? December 19th. Oh, six months. So. Six months yeah. younger than me. Exactly. <laughs> After a short break, we return to Ragdoll to continue the exterior works. You realize just how big 47 foot is when you have to compound wax and paint all of it. Oh, do you want to come anti foul with Mama? Oh, the baby! <laughs> that was a long day. <laughs> it was a long day. Uh, it's a big boat. There's a lot of stuff to cover. So we've got maybe, what, <laughs> three quarters of the hull compounded. So we've got one yeah. side and halfway through the other side. So that's good. We've got the anti-fill patching. All the patches are done. done and we're starting on the back of the boat now. Yeah. So tomorrow it will be finished, the keel's done, the rudder's done, and sort of part of the back of the boat is there. Ready, but ready for my bed. That's absolutely knackering. My hands are. Every year it gets harder, and I don't know if that's just me getting older. I think it might be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but now it's, what, 8.30ish? Yeah. So it's definitely time for bed. 
and then restart again tomorrow we've got some more daylight we've just taken doggies for a little zoomie so they could get out but they've been sitting watching us work all day today poor things I'm very patient you didn't get to do much fun stuff today did you big girl no <laughs> so what's the plan for tomorrow then plan for tomorrow so we'll finish the compounding and we'll finish the anti-fouling. We'll get the, the, the boot top taped off, get that done. We'll get another coat of prop speed on the propeller and the lights. Yeah, I'll put the last layer of that on tomorrow. We ran out of time to do it last time. And then to leave it, what was it, two hours between each coat? So quite, quite a bit. So by the time we've done that, anti-foul and hull compounding, the boat can go in the water and then the rest of it's sort of easy street. The following day, the launch preparations continued. So this morning Chris is back to polishing and I'm trying to finish off the anti-fouling. This is where we got about yesterday, we were just filling in the patches, going over them twice and now we're doing the rest of the anti-fouling today. Also going to put a last coat of the Seajet um, anti-fouling as well on the prop because it just needs one more coat and then it's good to go for the season. Voltarol ibuprofen gel on my knees lower back and two ibuprofens yeah and that's before i even started today <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of uh, a lot of work with all this top side. So Chris has finished the polishing, a waxing and compounding the hull. It's now beautifully shining and I with my two sore thumbs have finished the anti-fouling. Chris is just touching up um, the last bit of it and the waterline. And it's coffee time. <laughs> it's definitely coffee time. Would you stop wanting it to be coffee time? It until needs to be coffee time. Until it's done. It needs to be coffee time. I'm starving and I'm gonna get grumpy if I don't get coffee. Plus, I'm looking forward to taking off my um, thing. What's it you called me yesterday? An un uncolored Teletubby. So after looking like an uncolored Teletubby for two days, I'm really looking forward to getting out of this. Although I'm more of a grey Teletubby now. I said she looked like a Teletubby from a kid's colouring in book. <laughs> <laughs> So Jasper is about to start painting the bed slats for his new cabin um, because he's going to be moving into the bunk cabin when it's complete um, as he should have a little bit more headroom and generally speaking a bit more space in there. The bed slats need to be varnished so this is going to be Jasper's job given that it's going to be his new cabin so he's very excited to get started. In the meantime I'm going to get on to painting the prop and putting the last coat of the sea jet clear prop whatever it's called <laughs> 
That's what it's called. And what are you up to? Just at home, breaking things. Standard. Did you get a bit on these? I forgot. I had completely forgotten about our underwater lights. They got quite fouled uh, last season, so we thought that we're gonna put the same anti-fouling, the color clean stuff, on the light as we do on the prop to see if it makes a difference. Because it's clear, Hopefully, it will not block out the light. And we can see blue fish. Done. So what are you working on? Uh, I'm, I'm a one pad wonder. This isn't Halberg Rassi level finishing here. It's uh, bottom of a berth storage, so it doesn't okay. need to be great, it just needs to be covered. <laughs> so just uh, slapping on a quick and dirty coat of varnish onto components for the, the bunk cabin. Uh, well, which, which is no longer a bunk cabin. No longer a bunk cabin, it is now a really good single cabin. Um, we're going to put Jasper up there. It's a bit more bright and airy up there um, and he'll have a bit more headroom as well in comparison to the aft cabin where he's at now. Um, but it also means he doesn't have to listen to the engine on the other occasion that we do have it running. Um, we did insulate the engine this winter but no one likes to sit next to it. No. And uh, yeah, aft cabins and boats like this tend to ventilate um, not as well as the front cabins. Uh huh, little doggy. Oh, is this going to be your cabin? This is going to be your cabin and now it's not. Oh my gosh. I'm going to have to share an aft cabin with Hachi. What a disaster. The tragedy going to be a really good single. So we've raised, we, we've got rid of the top bunk and we've raised the height of the lower bunk. And what that's given us is a huge volume of storage space that we didn't have before. And it's easily accessible. Those pine slats that you saw earlier are just going to be like that. The mattress will be in one section, two sections. So all our most commonly used tools, stores, bits and pieces, engine spares, probably in here. Thanks, Luna. Nah. And, <laughs> and all it will be, you know, when, whenever we need to access that, that mattress will just go whoop, off, up, in, and all that will be easily accessible. So I've got the, the top glassed in. I've got the support glassed in. Um, I've got 90% of what I have to build built out in here. So I'm just gonna do a little more building and setting up and then we're gonna clear everything out of here and paint it and varnish it as needed. So that's the plan. Excellent. And then vinyl the hull. Once it's all painted and all the final grinding's done, yeah, hull gets vinyled, these panels all get re-vinyled, this gets vinyled, this gets vinyled, the slats and the panels go back in and then we can template for a mattress. Beautiful. So today is the day. We are launching at 6 p.m. today. Hello. <laughs> are you excited? I'm knackered. <laughs> so, got the bow thruster painted out. I'm just gonna little coat on the keel then I think they're going in first then over to us we'll be ready to do the patches and a partridge in a so high tide here is um, just short of 6 p.m. so we are going to be launching in the next half an hour This was it. After months of sweat, hard work and lack of sleep in the boatyard, Ragdoll was finally going back in the water.
We were nervous and excited to move aboard, to get going, to start our adventure. What has been years in the planning was finally coming into fruition. It was an elating, anxious, yet rewarding moment. One thing is for sure, our life is about to completely change. And I guess that's us, away from RB Marine for a while. Thanks for everything, guys. After leaving the RB Marine boatyard, we arrived at Rue Marina, where we finally moved aboard. Join us next time for a peek into our liveaboard life as we prepare to leave the UK. Till next time!